we get a lot of questions about how we make our soap. So I think today we're gonna show you how we make soap. Hey, welcome back everybody. It has been a while, huh? Too long, too long. I was out of town and got to take care of some stuff. Hey, Fiona. Hey, Fiona. Hey, little girl. What you doing? She eating this grass all up. Yeah, I've been out of town um, for work stuff and Lauren took care of the farm while I was gone. She did a really, really good job. But now I'm back and we got to get back into the swing of things. Pigs are taken care of. Everybody's looking good so far out here. Check these sunflowers out. Isn't this awesome? Some of them are petering out a little bit. These ones got um, squash bugs on them. But yeah, uh, sunflowers are really doing awesome. And Lauren demanded, demanded that we do sunflower cover crops all the time. So I think that'll be all right. Uh, if you're actually up close to see this, you could see how many bees we have flying around here. It's amazing. It's really, really cool. And then got the sprinkler on the corn over there. So that's doing well. We'll check out the garden a little bit later because huh, we got to get in there. So the garden's growing like crazy, but there's also growing a lot of weeds like crazy as well. Hey, Jolene. <laughs> Hey Hope, morning chickens. So Tina and Peyton's udders are slat full and they're getting mighty round. So I think they're probably gonna have their babies pretty soon. Probably in the next couple weeks. And you won't wanna miss that because these two have some adorable babies. I cannot get this gate latch, there you go. Good morning, Ruth. Good morning, Raj. Good morning, Ollie. What's up, buddy? I heard you guys got food already. So I just need to get some uh, hay in here. Some hay in here. We gotta go see our friends on the other end. I'm gonna give them the rest of this Timothy hay along with some regular Bermuda. The Timothy hay definitely helps them with, um, you know, maintaining weight and stuff like that, especially if you have a low quality uh, grass hay that you're giving them. Not that we're giving it to them low quality on purpose but with this year the way rain's been you it's hard to find really good hay good morning friends Here. a little bit of everything in there we'll treat for you All right, so I heard this is your first time to our channel. I'm talking to you. You know who I'm talking to. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you the most crazy part of my day here. So this is your first time, so I need to let you experience what it's like to try and give these maniacs some food. calmer if you can call that calm so I can't remember if I covered it in a video so I'm just gonna tell you again we had sent some um, fecal samples in to the vet 
not sent them in, brought them in. And uh, <clears throat> just on a few of the ones that we were wanting to watch and make sure that they were doing okay. And uh, everybody came back okay. No coccidia, um, no worms, except for uh, Opal had a little bit of a worm load, they said, but nothing too crazy. They said we can check her again in a few weeks and, and just make sure she's okay. Get these chickens some food and then take care of the maniacs. So I wanted to show you all this, which I think it's pretty funny. Um, and it's pretty cool, in my opinion. Um, so we planted some wildflowers back here and some are popping through. Some look like flowers, some, some of it's just weeds back here. This is behind my workshop. Um, and then it's just sort of, it's just sort of a mess because the pigs were back here. We can honestly run the mower back here at any time and take this all that back down and it won't be an issue, but this is pretty cool. Check this out. So there's all these volunteer squash. There's volunteer tomatoes and volunteer squash and there's watermelon in here. We did not plant any of this back here, so that's pretty awesome. They are actually fruiting, so that's pretty cool. It's a uh, free food. It's the easiest food you can grow. Word on the street is eggs are gonna be pretty expensive this year, so if you haven't gotten yourself some chickens yet, I would highly recommend getting yourself some chickens. Alrighty, uh, let me get some food in here before they just go knock it down. So I'm gonna put some of this Redmond goat mineral in here. Uh, we have a link down below. Uh, check out our Redmond link and you can order from there. We just get a tiny little commission from them, but yeah, check it out and uh, we like it. We put a little bit over their food. You do have to be careful if you're giving mineral um, and putting it over food because you can actually give them too much and dehydrate them. Really be careful if it's this hot. Okay, come on in. Jolene, how are you doing this morning, ma'am? You're looking just stunning, stunning, healthy. Look at, look at this coat. Just check, check this coat out. You check back here to see if they're carrying uh, fat or too much fat or not enough. And she's looking fantastic. Just just healthy. The other psycho mamas out here are trying to get in. Can, can you hear that? That's trying to knock down the door to get in here. The problem with hand milking Jolene, for me, is that she's got little tiny teats and I have really big hands. And so that is typically the issue. All right, All right take a break. Take a break, take a break, take a break. All right, there she is, there she is. You may notice that we use the head gate for Opal and that's because um, she's a little ornery. That's all. That's all. She's other than that. She's sweet. And then she leans. <laughs> it's pretty funny. She leans way over here, almost off the stands. Got them hips, girl. Got them hips. She is by far our biggest goat, and she's got the best udder as well. We'll get a little bit out of her from the um, from the machine, but she prefers to be hand milked. All right, let's get out here and uh, give these goats the rest of this. Okay. Alrighty, let's get this milk inside and I think what we're going to do is we get a lot of questions about how we make our soap. So I think today we're going to show you how we make soap. But first, before we make the soap, we got to get the milk inside because that's the main ingredient. Well, here we are. We are in our ever-growing soap studio here at Daddy Wampus Acres and we've gotten a lot of requests from subscribers on showing our process of how we make our goat milk soap 
Um, I will say I'm not going to give our specific formula away, but I'm certainly going to show you how to do it and uh, show you if you do have goats um, or if you have access to goat's milk, how you can, you know, make some goat's milk soap yourself. So first things first, I need to cover this because uh, certainly someone's going to see it and mention it in the comments and I just need to address it right up front. You are smarter than me. You are going to wear long sleeves and gloves and long pants, closed toed shoes and eye protection when you make your soap. Okay, lye is a very alkaline thing and it will definitely burn your skin. Uh, so you are going to do that. First things first, I need to get our goat's milk. This is not how it comes out of the udder as you saw earlier in the video. This we actually have to freeze the milk into ice cubes so then we can um, mix it with the lye. The lye will scald your soap if you just put milk in there. I mean it'll get crazy hot so this is the way we found to do it. Certainly if you do not have goat's milk or access to it, uh, you could use powdered milk. I don't know that formula. Um, you should definitely go online and find a formula that uses powdered goat's milk. And I will also mention there are tons of recipes online and calculators online for your lye and stuff and you should definitely go check one of those out. Next thing I'm doing is adding some sodium lactate and I do this to harden the bar a little bit, uh, make it a little bit longer lasting and um, it's got some other good qualities for your skin in it as well. And it's just a salt. It sounds fancy but it's just a liquid salt, no big deal. Okay, next for the dangerous part, we're gonna add in our lye. Like I said, you, as the responsible person you are, are gonna take the necessary precautions so you don't hurt yourself. This stuff will burn the snot out of your skin. Always make sure you have some uh, cool running water nearby when you're using lye. And as uh, YouTube would want me to do, I'm not going to recommend that you use anything dangerous. Got it? Leave it to the professionals like me. The next thing I do is um, just get this stirred up. This will start melting our uh, milk cubes right away. And um, so I just want to make sure that it doesn't sort of bunch up in one spot and get too crazy. So like I said, um, this is where you'd want to use ton of precaution it certainly can splash and shoot up in the air and so you don't want to get burned by lye it is very very dangerous always remember that when we started over a couple years ago making our goat milk soap um, it was just sort of a way to use up our extra goat's milk um, but then when we realized how much it was helping people and how much people were coming back and telling us like friends and family were saying how great it was and we were using it and we knew how great it was and then we had some family and friends with like some skin conditions like psoriasis and eczema. They were just loving it. And so um, although we would never make any claims that this is going to heal anything, um, I know what our customers say and I know what our friends and family say and I know what we say um, is that it works. It just goat's milk on your skin. You can research it yourself. Do your own research. I would always encourage you to do that. Um, it's great for your skin. You can see how fast it melts. While we're making sure that melts down and blends, I'm gonna start mixing up our oils. And like I said, there is so many different oils that you can use in your own soap, and I would encourage you to check out these calculators and see specifically what it is that you wanna put in your soap. The main things you need to actually have soap are going to be lye and fats. That's, that's what you need to make soap. We found a really good blend of oils that works really good for us. And like I said, I'd encourage you to find the one that uh, hits the spot. Make sure, you know, deal with your allergies and stuff like that. You don't want to, you want to flare anything up. So make sure that it works for you. I did also want to bring up too that um, you can make really small batches of soap. So don't think that you need to go as large scale as us. We're making this because this is our business and we sell to people online and farmers markets. So we need to have a lot of it. But you, if you're just making this at home, you don't have to make as much. You can make really small batches. Um, so we've gotten all our main oils in. Next, we're gonna add our fragrance. You can do essential oils, fragrance oils, or um, whatever blend that you decide to use. The key is 
No harmful chemicals. It needs to be good for your skin. We make sure we source our fragrances very uh, responsibly. And um, I will never send a bar of soap out unless I've tested that batch on my skin. And then um, there's always some additives that you can add. Um, alfalfa powders, hibiscus powders, um, kale and clay, different things like that to really um, kick it up a notch. So I'm just going to do my final stirs here and I'm going to use my stick blender to blend everything up really good. So at this point in the process, you've blended the lye water or lye milk with the main oils and so now I'm going to do something called bringing it to trace and I just am looking for a light trace and trace means that once I have it mixed up and I can take my blender out and sort of like write your name across the top you know that's that's how you know you're at trace it is looking like we are at a light trace and so we're good and for this particular bar I'm going to spice it up a little bit and I'm going to add some natural colorant like micas or clays this is what this is the point when I do this and so I'm going to separate it out a little bit okay we got our colors mixed up now I have to pour them out so let's go to the other side of the studio here and this is the part you sort of have to work a little bit fast to make sure you don't get a bowl full of solid soap. But like I've said before, I am a trained professional. That's why I make a mess all over the place sometimes. This is handmade soap, so you're, it's only gonna be so perfect. I can make this stuff a million times and uh, it'll only be so perfect. All right, I'm gonna add in our colors and sort of top us out here. I'm also going to swirl it up a little bit so we can get some good color mixture here. But you can make them all fancy as you want to make them. And depending on the mold, you can make this soap basically look like whatever you want. Well, hopefully that is what y'all wanted to see. Uh, we've been getting questions and questions about how we make soap. And this is the process, like I said. I encourage you to go find your own recipe and um, really like perfect it so it, it makes it your own and you can have it so it's perfect for your skin. Um, or if you're like, that's a cool process, but I don't want to make it on my own, KettyWampusAcres.com, we got you covered. And heck, maybe, maybe you'll even get one of these bars you saw us make right here. But I really thank you guys for joining us. Sorry I took like a week off. I had to do stuff, but it's good being back with y'all. I really enjoyed it. Don't forget that when you homestead, you're home fed, but see y'all next time.